Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Ajab here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Anvil Valkyrie. So this is the military dropship. It's probably going to have a prominent position in the Squadron 42 game. And as you can see, it's got a very angular look. Definitely very military-like. We have these big thrusters up in the front. We also have some really big guns and a turret right at the bottom, which is right now facing backwards. So that's kind of an interesting resting position right there. But overall, this is a very cool looking ship but it's also quite expensive so for this particular review what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go over the design of the ship kind of give you my opinions on it and then we're going to be doing some tests of the ship itself now as we move over to the side as you can see the big thrusters are vtol thrusters so this ship should work very well in atmosphere it's also got these little wings i'm not really sure if they're big enough to where it would make a difference inside atmosphere but it at least has something and of course it also has some guns at the end of the wings but having flown this ship and crashed this ship around a little bit i can tell you that these wings are very fragile so if you bump into pretty much anything the wings just come right off so that's definitely something that you should be aware of now if we go over here to the side there's actually three entrances to the ship this is one of the entrances and it's probably the easiest one to get into what's really nice about this design is that they actually give you this step so you can actually just hit the jump button you'll climb right aboard and because we are in the revel in york hangar this is the damaged state of the ship over here at the back can go ahead and open the cargo bay it's a little bit weird right now because when we were actually flying around with the ship the cargo bay doesn't actually hit the floor which is i don't know it's an oddity i guess it's a bug but for the most part this cargo bay is quite large you can easily fit a few tumbral cyclones in here the interesting thing that i would want to know is can this thing actually fit a titan suit i think the answer will be yes because of how tall the ceiling is if you look right here this is me standing on the first floor and there is a second floor and if you look at the image from the titan suit it's about a two-story ship so the titan suit i think will fit into this ship or at least i hope it does because if it doesn't then we actually would need a different transport ship for the titan suit which would make this ship significantly less effective but since this is the premier drop ship for squadron 42 i really do think that it's going to be able to carry a titan suit over here on the sides you actually have some heavy machine guns that you can actually aim out the door so that's pretty interesting that pretty much solidifies it as being a combat zone dropship because on each side there is actually a weapon that you can use these are designed to be open in atmosphere so that you can just shoot right out of them so very interesting and of course you can drive vehicles out the back end Towards the middle of the ship, we actually have two doors right here, and these two doors go into where the troops are going to be stationed. You can fit 10 troops or 5 on each side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so 10 on each side, and if you open the second door, this is where the turret is. I'm going to go ahead and open the other side, so you can have a maximum of 20 troops and whatever vehicles that you want to have in here. Let's go ahead and get into the turret. It's actually a pretty nice view down here. I think you'll be just fine with the views. So let's go ahead and move up to the second floor of the ship. Now you can only access the second floor of the ship with this ladder right here, which is actually a bit annoying because a lot of the times you'll actually fall and have to reclimb the ladder. Now on the second part of the ship, this is the, this is the area for the crew. So we have two bunks. And then on the other side, we have another two bunks. So these are most likely for the people that are manning the turrets. And of course, we have one bunk right over here, most likely for the pilot. And if we move up front, we actually have two more seats for turrets. We have one over here on one side and the other one on the other side. And if we move up front, this is where the pilot sits. Look at right here. This is actually a very interesting thing right here in which you have a keypad, maybe That'll get implemented eventually, but that's rather interesting. And then when you move up front, this is where the pilots sit. Now, as a dropship, I'm actually kind of surprised that there is only the pilot seat and there is no co-pilot. Because when you are dropping off troops, there is a lot of things for the pilots to keep track of. And having a co-pilot to help you out in a real combat zone could potentially be very helpful. I'm also kind of curious on why it's so difficult to actually look down. If you're going to be landing this ship in order to drop off troops, you would think that it would be a little bit easier to actually look down or have a screen displaying where you're about to land. 
So as we move back to the back of the ship again over here on the right, this is where the lavatory is and it's also where the shower is. So it's one shower for the crew. It's definitely not meant for the troops because there's only one of them. Moving on to the center of the ship, this is where the top turret is. And as you can see, it's a forward facing turret. Pretty nice view overall, so definitely very useful. Let's go ahead and go back down. One thing that people have always commented on is why we have this gangplank. Why wouldn't the top part of the ship be completely sealed off from the bottom part of the ship? And that's a valid assessment. Now what could potentially be really nice up here is this is a very defensible position if your ship was getting invaded. The only thing that I would add is that there should be a panel right here so that you can actually take cover behind like an armored panel so that when you're actually defending the ship you can have something to hide behind as you are shooting back at the aggressors. That's something that I think would be pretty helpful and it would also be really helpful if this actually had a hatch. Overall though the design of the ship is pretty nice. It does definitely definitely have a very military look to it. It definitely has a lot of capabilities. It just remains to be seen whether or not it can actually take the punishment of a dropship and also whether or not it can actually carry Titan suits because if it cannot carry Titan suits then it significantly devalues this ship because we're going to need another different transport ship in order to do that. I don't think I would actually purchase this ship until I have a better understanding on whether or not this ship can actually fit a Titan suit. So that was my quick review of the Anvil Valkyrie. Now there are a couple of specs that I do want to know about and I do want to document it and it's going to be up on GitHub so I'll provide a link below. One of them is acceleration. So from 0 to 1100 which is the Anvil Valkyrie's max speed, how fast can it actually get there? So I went ahead and recorded that and from what I've seen it's about 23.4 seconds. I didn't measure it all the way down to the hair second but it is around there and since this is the first ship that I actually measured I don't have anything compared to but I'm going to go ahead and start documenting all the accelerations and decelerations and also a few other things so I can actually compare ships so deceleration from 1100 all the way down to zero just letting it decelerate by itself it takes about a minute and 17 seconds obviously you can do other things to actually make it go a little bit faster but a minute and 17 seconds is what it took I also wanted a base measurement for quantum travel so I go from Port Alsar all the way out to Hurston and I wanted to see how how long it would take so on the anvil valkyrie it took eight minutes and 31 seconds interesting thing is it did overheat once right around the five minute mark it overheated which means i had to drop out of quantum travel i had to let the engines cool down and from there as soon as the engines cooled down i spooled back up and i traveled the rest of the way and that took about eight minutes and 31 seconds with one quantum travel overheat which honestly for a military transport ship i didn't think it was going to overheat so i did you think there is a little bit of balance that needs to be done the last test that i wanted to do was how quickly it can actually leave atmosphere and again i did it from hurston what i did was i lined up with the sign on the hurston airport because that's very easy to measure i'm not looking to be accurate to the very second i just want a general ballpark so for this test what i'm going to do is i'm going to angle up to 45 degrees and then i'm just going to boost all the way to the maximum and what i want to see is one does the ship overheat two how long does it actually take to get out of atmosphere so for the anvil valkyrie it did not overheat it did take a while to actually build up some speed and the further away i got to the planet the faster the ship did go there was no overheat problems and it took about four minutes and 20 seconds to exit out of atmosphere for the anvil valkyrie again since this is the first ship that i reviewed i have no numbers to compare to but as i review other ships i can definitely compare it to the rest of them now if you think there are other measurements that i should keep track of definitely leave in the comments below and I'll see if I can actually keep track of them. So that's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this type of content, please subscribe to the channel as we will be covering all things Star Citizen. If you have any questions or recommendations, please leave it in the comments below. We greatly appreciate new subscribers as this will allow us to create more content in the future. That's all I have. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.